How does it feel bringing new life to a story that has terrified people across the decades? I suppose uh, it's because it's in this day and age, and I think, I mean, I haven't been on this planet for very long, but I feel like I can say a lot has changed in since, like, 2000. I mean, I, I don't remember when the War of the Worlds film was made, the last one with Tom Cruise. Was it 2007? I feel like it was. Um, but it was, so, I mean, what I'm trying to get at is that a lot has changed in the past couple of years anyway. Um, so I feel like that's, you can take that as something and it's, yeah, I suppose, just something that's like a different depiction of what War of the Worlds can be. It's all kind of interpretational. It's not really anything you can really kind of, uh, it's all circumstantial, I think in whatever time zone. There we go, that's my answer. It's all circumstantial. <laughs> Boom, I got there. <laughs> Ha <laughs> 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 ha! <laughs> How does it feel? How does it feel? It feels, it feels great. I, I think um, if you look back at the way that you know it was received uh, in the past in the original novel, and then there was the radio version with Orson Welles, I think, and when that c came out, from what I've heard anecdotally, is that there were quite a few people who thought it was real. And so as it was being announced, you know, that aliens were coming, people were tuning in and they were, they were really responding to what was happening. I don't think that anyone that tunes into this will necessarily think that it's happening live. But there is something, there is something about, as Ty says, like now is a very different place to two, three, four, five, six years ago. I mean, we're so aware of the news cycle of how, you know, there's a lot of pretty depressing things that are happening in the world. And there is also a history of making films in Hollywood and television, of taking it to the nth degree to see yeah. to see where we would be. So this is a sort of state of the nation piece in some ways, state of Europe. Um, and it it sort of it takes people who exist now and says, how are you going to deal with this situation? Mm. And I think as a viewer, one of the greatest thrills and or, you know, quite terrifying experiences sometimes is when it's put into your court. And I think in this multi-protagonist cast, you're presented with people from very, very different demographics. And um, in each case, they're asked to survive. And I think the viewer in some ways is asked to survive through this and go, where am I? Who am I? What would I do? I'd do better than him, I'd do worse than her. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of, yeah. you know, it's, it's sort of, you have to ask yourself a few questions while you're watching it, which is always fun. <clears throat> and um, what was the most surprising aspect of the adaptation for you as an actor? Ooh. Um, hmm. Well, for, for me, in the initial reading of the script, what I really, uh, it was surprising and also delightful was, was the, the fact that there were, that it wasn't from one person's point of view. That, you know, often you take something like this and you follow a hero or an anti-hero or whatever through their thing. And this is, you know, something which we see a lot nowadays is, 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 a, is, a, is an ensemble cast. Mm. And for me, it was really exciting that you were able to leap from one to the other, from country to country. And at the same time, as you see in these first two episodes, mm. of course, for once in the whole world, the same thing is happening at the same time. These things are arriving here, there, mm. everywhere, and everybody is looking up at the sky at the same time. Everybody in the world, yeah. you know, it's a little bit like you know, the Olympics. You know, when it was on TV, everybody yeah. was watching it. You know, there's something so yeah. unifying about people experiencing something at the same time, and I found that very dramatic and and credible. Yeah, there's little moments as well where sort of like the, they tie in those little stories together like like you said it's like that that kind of they everyone's having their own story and their own journey and how those little like kind of those uh those lines that you hear of kind of like linking to the other kind of journeys and then they go into the other journey and it's all kind of it's all linked together and like you said when it all starts it's everyone looking at the skies at the same time and it's like okay this is when it starts this is when it's happening mm. and where do we go from here where do we go now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Um, and this production was a global one, like you said, um, and the story is being told across the world. Um, do you think that's a reflection of the times now, with the world coming together to face global crises? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think it I think it reflects that. It mirrors that, and I think we are so used to 
Well, everybody has the capacity to edit in their own minds what's going on in the world. We, we're, we're inundated with so much information if we choose to, to have it. And, and in some ways, as animals, we're not, we're not born to, to take in so much information. You know, we're quite, quite local in some, some ways, but we live in a world where we are aware of, of what's going on. And I think, in some ways, this reflects that. There's so much information coming from so many different people. But there is, as we've said, this unifying, this unifying moment where everybody goes, everything's changing. Everything, everything, everything is changing. And I can't rely on <clears throat> my phone. I can't rely on electricity. I can't rely on this. I am suddenly, and I think it's amazing that everybody has this well of mm. capacity in emergencies. We all have emergencies in our lives. And we either flee or we fight or we rise to the occasion or we fall down flat. And on a Wednesday, you may fall down flat. And on a Thursday, you may rise up. And I think, you know, that's, that's kind of what this show's about in some yeah. ways. You know, you can't always be a hero. Yeah, you can't always do the mock, like the ethical thing you want to be doing. <clears throat> and you've always just got to make those kind of, uh, those leaps and bounds that you wouldn't make in an ordinary day. Because it's, it's like this, it's kind of, like you said, it's kind of like you're taking this sort of ordinary life, this ordinary, just this ordinary day, and then aliens come. And it's just everyone's just, it's every man and woman for themselves. And it's kind of, you know, you see those little journeys and, uh, the the kind of uh, those experiences the characters go through as the series goes on, you kind of you start to unravel who they are really as people. Not just uh, before they before aliens came, but who are they? You know, in their primal form, like who, what do you do in a in a time of crisis? Literally, the end of the world, the war of the worlds. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That should be the opening lines of that, yeah. Um, and what was the key aspect of each of your characters that you particularly wanted to explore? For me, I felt that um, Jonathan is very complacent. He's very complacent in his life. He's very comfortable to some extent. He has a few issues, but everything's on a, on a fairly easy plane. And what I wanted to explore was how does a very civilized man and I say civilized in you know um, how does a civilized man behave when he's in when he's in a state where everything's questioned when he's away from his family what sort of homing instinct kicks in what what are those kind of reflex things which are at the back of the brain what what are what are those animal characteristics that come through when need be and how does he also remain civilized when he has to make choices and all of that was in the script um, but for me I sort of I wanted to be the best advocate of that to try and show that he is a man who is complacent but that doesn't necessarily mean that he doesn't have the capacity to be better and does this does this is this actually an opportunity an adventure in some ways for somebody who is complacent to be able to get away from themselves as they've known and experienced uh, a clearer life. And I think for him, it's liberating that he's able to say, I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I've, I've got to get home. I've got to get home. He just knows that. And you know, sometimes in this world that we live in now, just being sure of one thing is quite rare, you know, because we do have so much going on. <laughs> True, yeah. yeah. I get, I mean, I think one of the things that I wanted to explore with Tom was that he's, uh, I mean, he's 14, and I, uh, when I was, when we were filming this, I was 16, turning 17, and so I, I kind of, I took from my own experience, like, what it's kind of like to, and then I realised, right, I can't do this, because it's a, he's, he's a teenager that his, you know, his problems at that point is like, you know, I don't have enough followers on Instagram, or I don't, you know, I'm, I'm I, like, I'm not, my hair isn't right, or whatever it is, and, you know, you're, you're, he's thrust into a world where it's literally the end of the world. Those aren't problems anymore. Those are, they are n nothing. <laughs> so it's sort of like, you know, what does he, what's his role in this? So what's, does he, what is he supposed to do? And I think as you watch the show, you sort of 
you see his realization of what he's supposed to be to not just his family, but also just to everyone and everything around him. So yeah, I think that's one of the things that I kind of wanted to see with Tom, where could that, where could, that could go. It is quite interesting, I think, in, in this, that they have uh, the older characters, in some ways, so set in their ways, and actually quite, <clears throat> quite sort of just um, inward looking and protective of their families, and the younger characters have a more of a capacity to look out through through their inexperience and and actually tell their parents you know that their parents can learn from from a, a degree of naivety which yeah. is also when are you get when are you going to be when are you going to be kind mm -hmm. above above just trying to survive you know yeah. i think that's a it's a sort of it's an element in this which i i really yeah. really like is that it's not that experience wins sometimes naivety is 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 the best way of surviving you know you 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 make friends you make connections you mm. know, which which you wouldn't make necessarily in your average complacent life because you don't need those people you don't care for them mm. you don't have any purpose towards you or like your goals it's like if you in you're in this environment you need everyone to survive there's not a, there's not any choice it's just i keep saying this word but primal it's like you kind of like you're coming it's you're, you're stripping all of that kind of that almost ego. Do you know what I mean? That's, mm. There's no kind of you're just you're going for what the logical, realistic possibility is. It's always that kind of and there's that because we're also humans. There's that kind of element of you have to make the ethical decision. You have to make the right decision. Like what is the best call? And sometimes the right call isn't always the ethically moral one. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Mm. Noise. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!